Hello and welcome to Social Audio Think Tank. My name is Jackson. I'm coming at you from Carnegie in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm here with my co-host, Josh. How are you, Josh? I'm very well, thank you. And suffering some instant bandwidth problems we weren't having before we started recording then. (laughs) (laughs) Today we're getting into the episode. So we're going to talk about what what we think makes up our dream podcasting gap for uh for listening our dream podcast player right, rather than a podcast recorder so uh josh have you got any ideas what's what's your what's your number one dream feature in a podcasting player there are a few and just so everyone knows i think i might have proposed this particular idea and i had a few ideas so Hopefully I don't steal too many of Jackson's because I was thinking it might be easier if I just list all mine and then you list all yours because I think we might have different perspectives on why we want certain things. And basically what I'm looking for is a pure consumption-driven app. So these are the things for me that I really enjoy. And just if you're on iOS and you're not familiar with an, an app called Castro, that's C-A-S-T-R-O, Castro or Castro or however you want to pronounce that. That's my favorite podcasting app at the moment. It's the best one I've used. It looks really great and everything about it just works the way that I would like. I'm basically going to pretend today that I can use Castro as it is now in January 2015 and then add these extra features to make it absolutely perfect for what I want. So I guess I'll just list them and I don't want to waste the listeners' time too much today so I won't go too much into everything but the first thing is a really functional thing and that is there's a lot of podcasts out there at the moment that have a really heavily compressed host and then they're taking a guest whether they're on Apple earbuds or a telephone line or they're another podcaster with a great sounding setup. I'm finding there's a lot of shows that are doing real-time compression which is great if you're going to live stream. I mean, you want to have all that stuff in there. But it also, to me, sounds a little bit like it's mismatched as to how much you're getting barreled with compression and bass from one host to the next. So the first thing I would want to combat that is just basically a 115 dB bass cut. So if I'm listening to a show where I really enjoy the sound, but one particular host or the whole show itself is just way too bassy for me to turn it up to a decent volume to hear it without feeling like I'm getting pummeled, a switch on there just to basically cut out those really low frequencies, I think would help me to lift the volume of certain shows to a listenable level, particularly when I'm outside. I mean, when you're outside, you need things to be louder. Sometimes you turn it up louder, but you also start to punish yourself by how bassy and how compressed a lot of shows are that use a lot of multiband. So a 115 dB bass cut would be the first thing. And just so everyone knows, there probably is one particular app out there I've never seen that does some of this stuff or all of it. And if that's true, at Joshua C. Liston on Twitter. But as I mentioned, I'm basing this on a, a, an app that's very much like Castro to begin with. The next thing is variable playback speeds. And people are going to be like, Josh, what the fuck? <laughs> all of them do that already. What I mean is something that's more like a guitar knob that can be really finely tuned And it might not be as easy because I'm sure there's some really complex algorithms that run variable playback. And that's why they have a designated numbers of different things, whether it's half time or normal speed, one one and a half times speed, two times speed or whatever. I'd rather something, depending on how quickly the person speaks, and for anyone from overseas that listens to me speak, apparently it's 100 miles an hour. So they would probably like to just say 1.5 is a little bit too slow, but two speed is too fast. Something that's more like a guitar knob or a finely tuned dial, to me, like if you're really fine tuning a, a radio, like an old school radio where you can really you can kind of hear it and it sounds good, but then if you really fine tune it, it's perfect. That is what I'm after. Either a slider or a knob that can do variable playback, because in some apps, in Castro particularly, there's a massive difference between the second fastest speed and the fastest. And depending on who you're speaking to, particularly Australians, talk very, very, very quickly compared to a lot of other people. I said very, 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 very quickly then. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect example. 
that would be good to really be able to fine tune that for different people. So that's the next thing, a variable playback that's kind of like a guitar knob on an amplifier or an old school radio when you're fine tuning. The next thing is a total hours listened counter. And I couldn't think of a better way to say that. But a good example is if you have the Audible app on either Android or iOS. Audible is an audio book app and it's owned by Amazon. They've got this counter that lets you know total amount of hours. And with their counter, I'm not completely sure whether they're just basically taking the book as being finished and that goes into your hours total because, I mean, I'm listening at triple speed. So I'm listening to eight hours in three hours' time. So I'm not sure if it's real time or whether they're just taking the length of the book. So it's not that accurate, but I'm sure in a podcast app you could make it accurate. For example, if you've only listened to half an hour because you're playing on double speed in real hours, but it's actually an hour's worth of content, that should go as an hour into the counter because that's how much time you've actually... Well, that's how much show you've listened to as versus how much real time it was. And the reason I want that is because I think it would be a great way for really hardcore power users like me that listen to a lot of shows to, A, keep track of how much of your fucking life you're wasting listening to stuff, <laughs> <laughs> which is a lot for me, believe me. Even the Audible app's like crazy. I think I've reinstalled the Audible app numerous times now, and even on the most recent install of my iPhone 6, which I've only had since November, I think I'm up to about 90 listening hours so, and that's only in a month and a little bit. So I think I think something like that, that actually can like log you over time, even if you change devices and change time, you could see how many thousands of hours of your own life you've wasted. So, <laughs> and all the podcasts are freaking amazing. And you, you can see how much of your time you spend on really good stuff, which is more so the point. And why I think that's great is you could break it down into ranges. So daily, weekly, monthly, or whatever. And they're simple things like taking a photo and sending it to the producer of the show. Hey, I just listened to your whole back catalogue. In case you're wondering, there's 115 hours of that <laughs> or whatever. And I've listened to all of it. And it's really a great way then for the actual show producers, which I, this is where the crossover is between our audience and their regular listener. I think there'd be a great way for people to really know who their power listeners are because you could run competitions through those counters. You could say, okay, I want the biggest fan listener of the week. And that's why you need to break it down into smaller ranges. So whoever listens to my show the most this week and sends me a photo on Instagram or Twitter, I'll send you a T-shirt or something. So it's kind of a way for people to be sharing around the show, how much they love podcasts. And when those type of things start to float around the internet, people are going to be wondering, what is it that you spend 115 hours on exactly? Or like, what is this podcasting thing? And I think it's a way to start conversation about what the medium is and really show that, okay, I know that my friend listens to podcasts, but he's listening to, once again, 115 hours of this one show or this one group of shows. Maybe there's something real there that I should go check out. So I know that all sounds a bit funny, but yeah. So I want a listener counter and then something where you could get given badges by the app itself to say, hey, you listened to 50 hours of podcasts this month. Congratulations. Take a photo of that and send it to the producer of the show. The last thing is an auto fade in sort of setup where you can set it to auto fade in between shows so you don't just click from one episode that maybe is recorded at a low volume level and then get smashed in the head by another show so even if it's only a few second fade it gives you a second as it winds up to either control the volume or to lower the volume so that's another simple thing just like the bass cut just so you don't blast yourself all the people around you if you happen to be listening to shows without headphones so I don't know what you think of all those features, Jackson, or whether they sound a bit pie in the sky, but... I think the um, the total hours listened is probably... That is a genius idea, and I, I don't know why that hasn't uh, been implemented yet, because I know there's there's every other person I meet now has a Fitbit on their wrist, and they can go home and they can see a graph of how many steps they've walked every day for the last six months or whatever, and they've got this huge amount of data about their everyday lives. And why not include podcasting in that data and yeah like you said you can you can give that data back to the podcast themselves and see who their biggest fans are and and what are their listening habits and it's just another way to to get some data out of everyday life that i think would be a great feature if any app uh really implemented that in a serious way that'd be interesting we might have to send a few tweets 
and they <laughs> and point to this part of the episode. Basically, what you've just made me think of too, which I think is genius, and I'm going to say that about your idea, look more so than mine, is <laughs> the fact that you put it back to something that more people understand, and that's yeah. the fitness thing and the graphs. When you take certain things like Fitbit, they actually have huge communities on the internet that compete to be at the top of their little list. And it's all fun, or it's meant to be fun. You can actually maybe imagine starting a small community around social audio think tank where people could try to be the biggest listener for the week or have, and that all gets taken care of somewhere online, like what happens with the Fitbit, which is one of the things you're talking about. You choose the people in your group, you can have a private Fitbit group, really endless when you start to bring in technology from other industries. Because at the moment, even the podcast app, which is the biggest of the apps, it has a lot of weird little flaws and it can be clunky at different times and do just weird stuff like you clear out all of your unplayed episodes and then refire up the app and they're there again. Yeah. Just, I mean, nothing's downloading, but it's still, there's imperfections in every app. But I think that we should be trying to not just bring in technology from other podcasting apps and blend them together, but from whole other industries where the apps are very successful and very engaging and the fitness industry at the moment is a perfect example. So yeah, maybe if anyone's out there that thinks you guys have got a great idea, I actually know how to word that, that someone <laughs> from an actual app company would be understand because we're just talking pie in the sky. I'm sure that there's people in our audience or audiences of other podcasts about podcasting where they're probably thinking, well, that all sounds great, but there's a massive amount of coding you don't understand to do that or whatever. So if you like our idea, take it and share it with someone that might know how to implement that or find a way to put it in the language that presents it better and without the F words, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I went on for ages and about my dream features. Is there anything that you are interested in talking about that you think would be a great feature? There's one thing that's, it's kind of it's kind of difficult to to imagine it actually being implemented into a podcast app, but I really would like to see. Like I've got the I use the the Apple Podcast app, and you click on the the logo while you're playing it, and you can see the show description. But I really want a, an an easy way to get to the show blog page because there's so many podcasts where they'll say like uh, we put we'll put this image on a, on the blog post attached to this episode. And it'd be really great if I could just in the podcast app just click on that and see the image. And I know it's not you can't you can embed it in the RSS feed, but that's not really going to happen. I'd love to be able to have a little web browser built into the podcast app, just enough that I can go to the web page and see the image that they're talking about, or see whatever other thing they've linked to on the on the blog post attached to the to the podcast. So, not to get too geeky. But you're talking about building an app that runs kind of like an iframe thing within the app. Yeah. So it pulls their their web page to within the confines of the app, yeah. and you can just you know enlarge or shrink that page within the app itself. Yeah. So it's kind of like taking a web page and squeezing it inside of something else. Yeah. Well, it's it's not a, it's not going to be a, a full web browser because it's yeah that would definitely not work. Like the mobile version or something. Just enough to see the images, really, because there's so many times they say, we've linked an image, and then I've got to go find their website, find the episode in particular, and it might not be the latest episode, it might be three episodes ago, and I've got to browse through their menus, and they may not be the best menu structure, it might be difficult to find, and it's just, if I could just click a button and say, there's the image, perfect, that's, that's what I want to see. Thank you, and at JX Jackson on Twitter for Jackson, and at Joshua C. Liston on Instagram and Facebook, and Twitter for me, and Joshua C. Liston at Gmail if you want to reach out with a question. And hopefully, in the next episode, we'll be able to give you some ideas of what the fuck just happened. So, see you later, everyone. Bye bye.